Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Project Life Cycles. This is Lecture D. The objectives for Project Life Cycles are to identify process groups and knowledge areas in project management, differentiate linear, iterative, adaptive, and agile project life cycles, relate life cycle phases to reviews, milestones, and deliverables. Compare various organizational structures as contexts for managing projects. In this lecture, we will continue reviewing the third objective before proceeding to the fourth objective. Projects generate deliverables. Certainly, every project is undertaken to deliver results. It can be a product, a health IT system, an IT capability to perform a service. It can include documentation, online help facilities, or online services. The deliverables are unique, and they need to be verifiable. That is, it must be possible for you to confirm that these deliverables have been generated by the project and that they meet the expectations of project stakeholders. Timeliness of the deliverables and their quality are the key determinants of project success. Attention to deliverables during the project is a critical aspect of your role as a project manager. Attention to the detail in your requirements will give you the detail of your deliverables. A requirement that is unclear will give you a deliverable that doesn't meet the needs of your stakeholders. Be sure that the requirements are objective, documented, and concrete, so that you can make sure that your deliverables are objective, documented, and concrete. Here are a few examples to suggest the range of deliverables in health IT projects, and again, the idea here is simply to reflect on the variety of deliverables that may be possible. Certainly, with health IT systems, some of the deliverables may be systems that provide capabilities, like implementation of various electronic health record systems. They can also be IT-enabled processes, such as new ways of admission or service delivery in an outpatient setting or prescription fulfillment, even internal applications for your own IT operations within your health organizations, such as web-based employee time reporting. Please keep in mind the great diversity that the deliverables represent. They not only include operational systems, but also various operational processes, procedures, and services. Many times, the deliverable is nothing more than a report that can be sent to upper management or to a regulatory body. Keep in mind that all of the output of your project is going to be a deliverable to someone within the organization. The fourth topic we want to investigate in connection to project life cycles relates to the organizational setting or context for your work as a project manager. There are certainly organizational issues that come into play, and your awareness of these issues will help you succeed. Certainly, one aspect relates to customers, and whether those customers and users are internal or external, because different possibilities come into play with respect to management and leadership of the project. So, for example, for external customers, it will be important to understand your reporting roles relative to your senior management and your customer. Typically, in an external customer situation, the senior management in your organization has counterparts in the customer organization. Understanding those relationships are critical to your project's success. Another aspect or key organizational issue is where your project finds its team members. Are they coming from multiple organizations with multiple lines of authority and responsibility? They might have differences in the way they work, in their organization style and practices. And finally, there can be different IT system development challenges. Today, systems development includes virtual teams from multiple organizations, and many organizations provide specific rules for large projects. So there can be many partner relationships, contractor-subcontractor relationships, sourcing relationships, and certainly, global development is a fact of life in many development projects. The bottom line is that projects in the 21st century have increased the complexity of the management and oversight responsibilities you have as a project manager. It can involve virtual teams in multiple organizations, and respecting and appreciating the issues that relate to these can be key to your success as a project manager. 
Another way of looking at organizational context is, what is the culture of your institution? Is it a very formal culture, or is it a more relaxed, easygoing culture? Do you have a lot of complexity in the hierarchy, or is it a very lean and mean institution? All of these characteristics will affect how you communicate with management and customers. Let's look at organizational structures specifically. Formal organizational structures and multiple organizational structures can relate to project funding, to reporting lines of authority, to management reporting, and to your project staffing. Here, we want to look at three examples of organizational structures and suggest what some of the issues might be for you as a project manager if you're operating in each of these three organizational structures, a functional organization, a matrix organization, and a project-based organization. Healthcare IT projects take place in all kinds of organizations. You have your functional organizations, like hospitals, where it's very siloed, and you have the various departments that you have to work with. You can have matrix organizations, like a community physician office, where you're working with multiple physicians and their staff. Or you could have a project-based organization, where you manage the people that are directly under you. And you can use those resources as you see fit. As we look at project management in each of these three different organizational structures, the first one we review is a functional organization. The diagram shows where you might appear as the project manager operating in a functionally organized organization. And some of the questions you may have include whether the team members on your project are under your line management responsibility, or as the diagram shows here, under your boss's line responsibility so they really don't report to you directly, except on this specific project. It could also be that team members are coming from other functional areas, and in that sense, it's important for you to appreciate the relationship that your functional manager has with counterpart functional managers from these other areas. You need to appreciate that your team members' loyalties exist both to your project and to their home functional unit, and respecting and appreciating those is critical to your project's success. Hospitals are a good example of a functional organization. Each functional unit, such as nursing, physicians, laboratory, or radiology, has its own staff, and you may be called upon to use people from each of those functional units on your project team. A second way of organizing an organization may be in a matrix fashion. This organization has not only functional managers, but also a program manager to oversee projects. In this case, as a project manager, you may report to a program manager who has a number of projects under his or her authority. It's important to appreciate the allegiances that you have to the functional manager and that the team members have to their functional manager and to you as the project manager. It can be an unusual situation because some of the functional managers have team members that are reporting to you as a project manager. In a matrix organization, this arrangement is more common because there are many projects ongoing at any one time and the collection of projects has some visibility at higher levels. This kind of matrix operation needs to be understood very well to appreciate the multiple loyalties of the team members and the visibility that your projects have in a separate line of reporting through the program manager to senior executives. Another example of a matrix organization would be your local community physician's office. The senior executive is the managing director of that office, or perhaps the physician himself. Under him could be a functional manager for the laboratory, a functional manager for medical records, and a functional manager for the administrative staff. You, as the project manager, might have multiple projects that you're putting in this community physician's office at any one time, where you might have a project manager under you, or even two or three with their own projects. Our third example is a project-based organizational structure. In a project-based organization, as the name implies, the work of the organization is really pursued via projects. Typically, the projects are organized under programs, so a given program manager may have responsibility for several projects. This kind of organization is often found in consulting firms or professional service firms. 
Sometimes the program manager may be a person whose projects all relate to a given external sponsor. That program manager may have responsibility, as a senior manager, to the outside customer. You and your program manager might have counterparts in the customer organization. Many healthcare IT projects use consultants or professional services firms to increase the staff for a limited duration because they either don't have the expertise in-house or it's a project they've never tried before and they want to leverage these consultants' expertise. You need to understand the communication parameters regarding consultants in any particular organization with regard to your project. Is a consultant's time 100% yours? Or do they have obligations to other clients? Does the regional manager have a large region? Is it all of the United States, or is it just the Mid-Atlantic region, for example? Understanding those lines of communication will help you get what you need from your consultant group or your professional services firm. This concludes Lecture D of Project Life Cycles. In summary, we've reviewed process groups and knowledge areas in project management, as well as the four different types of project life cycles. We have also discussed how life cycle phases can be used to address reviews, milestones, and deliverables, and compare different organizational structures as contexts for managing projects. Please keep in mind that one of your key responsibilities is to specify a life cycle that's best suited to the characteristics of your project. While you develop a life cycle that is project specific, you can use universal established processes as well as certain knowledge areas such as how to manage people, time, cost, risk, and communications to help you manage that project. Fortunately, canonical life cycle models exist for you to use as a starting framework, which you can tailor based on the specific characteristics of your project.